Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Suburban Stone Age. Today's video is on pineapple guava. That is the bush you see right here. And this plant's about seven years old. So I wanted to share my experience with growing this plant and what you can expect if you choose to plant it too. This plant was put in the ground because it was edible. It produces an edible fruit which is a green sort of egg-sized fruit that you can scoop. It, it reminds me of a kiwi, although it doesn't taste like one. But anyhow, it's edible. The flowers, which are pink, you can see them on the tree right now, are also edible and very sweet. But more importantly, it's drought tolerant, which is so important in our climate here in Southern California. We've just had the toughest time with drought um, in the last, it's been 20 years really, but since 2014, it was very, very bad. And then uh, we got a little rain in 2018, but we're going back into severe drought. So having drought tolerant plants that are also edible is a great way to um, stack functions and have your cake and eat it too. Let's take a closer look at the flowers. It's late spring right now and these are what the flowers look like. Um, wildlife absolutely loves them, which you'll see here in a moment. But these petals too, um, they love to snack on them, but the flowers are also edible and so sweet. They're like candy, these little white or little pink flower uh, petals. Very sweet, they're delicious. You can use them in salad. So you kind of get two crops with this plant. You can get the flowers early on and then you can get the fruit later on. So this pineapple guava is a medium sized shrub. I've had it um, kind of pruned to fit its place. It could probably get a little taller. It's about five feet tall right now. But this is all I really want it to be, is, is about this height. So it's about five feet. Additionally, what I've learned about this plant is that if it gets too dry, it won't flower or produce fruit. This plant probably took five to six years before I got my first crop of fruit. And that was because um, it was planted during that severe drought of 2014. It was very young during that time. And although it survived and had leaves, it, I think it was just too hot and too dry and too stressful for it to flower. So um, you're n it's not perfect as a drought tolerant plant, but what is, you know, and, and it did survive until better days came. And it's early spring, you won't get fruit until the autumn, but it's a prolific producer. And when you do get fruit, there's a lot of it. So, uh, and it's pretty tasty. It's sweet and kind of light. I wish I had fruit to share with you uh, today to show you what it's like, but um, I'll post a picture. Anyhow, I just wanted to kind of give you a close up view of this low maintenance, drought tolerant, edible landscaping plant. It's it's a good one. I recommend it. The fruit is, to me, on a scale of one to ten, it's probably about a five as far as, um, you know, ease of eating and it is tasty. I do love the edible flowers. They're very sweet and delicious. But the fruit is, is pretty good, but you know, it is something to have in late fall. You can make things from it and also my chickens really like them. So there you go. All right, everyone, I uh, hope you enjoyed and give us a thumbs up if you want more gardening videos from our edible landscaping and food forest here at Suburban Stone Age. Subscribe if you want to catch up with us on all the adventures that we have and leave a comment if you have any questions about this plant. Thanks again. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.